I'm a grown man, that's my problem. I can do whatever I want. A weekend of ownership and it's my favorite car. Hello everyone, I bet you're wondering why there's a 1985 Toyota Corolla behind me. And it's because I made the best huge mistake of my life and I purchased it. I know what you're thinking. Oh, where's your S13? It doesn't run. Oh, your RX-7 is always broken. You're just going to break this one just like that. Oh, where's your FD? You haven't showed us your FD in so long. It's never going to run. You have so many cars. What's your problem? I'm a grown man, that's my problem. I can do whatever I want. So I bought that. The reason I bought a 1985 Toyota Corolla is because my old best friend in high school, Louis Santana, he had a single cam swapped GTS coupe and he loved it. I loved it. He's, he's really the main piece of the puzzle that really got me into cars early on. Shortly after that, a couple years later, a little more into uh, early 20s, I ran into a new group of car friends and one of those people, two of those people had A86s. Kevin Lawrence, uh, who we used to call Hachi, and then Christian, who we used to call Hachi Dos. You know, obviously, once you get into Corollas that way, you dive into things like Initial D. And then you got videos like uh, Katsuhiro Ueo. <laughs> chuck to chuck, lock to lock, craziest Corolla sounds, craziest, just crazy. A86s are awesome. The Toyota Corolla was introduced in 1966. Corolla is Latin for small crown, in reference to Toyota's proclivity to give its JDM sedan variants crown-based names. Over the years, more than 12 generations of Corollas have helped the model become one of the best-selling cars in the world. Today's Corolla features a wrong or front-wheel drive layout, but early versions were rear-wheel drive and it's the last of these glorious models that sets our hearts aflutter. The AE86 series was offered from 1983 to 1987 as part of the fifth generation of the Corolla range. It came as 11 with fixed headlights or with retractable headlights as a Truno, and both designations were available in hatchback or coupe. The model's JDM Hachiroku nickname is Japanese for 86, with a small, nimble chassis, manual gearbox, a near 50-50 weight distribution and a high-revving twin cam 16 valve iron block for a GE engine. The Hachiroku was well suited to spirited driving and by extension, motorsports. The Hachi was campaigned in many motorsport series with varying degrees of success. AE86 racers could be found in everything from Group N, Stage Rally, the European Touring Car Championship and a tube chassis iteration in the Japanese Grand Touring Championship. Yet, it was drifting where the little coral earned international acclaim and an enduring cult status. Thanks mainly to a central role in Initial D, the massively popular Japanese anime series. Japanese racing icon Kiyachi Drift King Tsuchiai also helped popularize the AE86, and to this day his sprinter Truno is still one of the most recognized hatchies. It makes me wonder if our own personal Drift King Hurt could very well be on the same path with his new whip. That is, if he doesn't break it first. They're perfectly slow in all the right ways, and I'm super excited for this project. How many cars is How this? How many cars is this for you? Like chassis included. Uh, I want to know if he's beating Brian. How many parking spots? RX-7, RX-7, <laughs> RX-7, RX-7. What? Four. Corolla. G GS300. 
GS350. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 240 SX. Yukon. Oh. Nine cars. Period. Oh, my it's God. Carcane is yes. a hell of a drug. Uh, so basically, you get yourself an NRG bucket seat. And then luckily this car came with Techno Toy seat rails, which have a ton of adjustability. And you basically just cock the seat back. So you give it a nice little gangster lean. Gives you room for, gives you room for the helmet. But honestly, this is a family car. So they, they thought about big people, I think, when they, when they made it. So works out well for me. I can't, you know, I can't remember what part of my timeline that I had an A86, but I actually had two of them. Uh, the second one, I remember that timeline, but the first one, I think it was an actual 86 Toyota Corolla SR5 red hatchback, full interior, perfectly running car, but it was single cam, obviously. And eventually got rod knock in that and just, you know, so I had to get rid of it. And then later on down the line, I actually owned a rolling chassis with a 1J and R154 mounted to it. The plan was obviously to get that running, but that was way beyond my ability also. I ended up parting out that car too, cause you know, same thing. I just wasn't in the right place for that. So I'm excited to really dive into this car and just do what I wanted to do back then, but with uh, adult money, I guess, cause kid money couldn't do it back then, so. Wait, what are you going inside for? You got the gold. You got the gold. Oh, oh, my you, got the gold. you found my guilty if pleasure? If you don't know about oh, cactus that's yours? cooler, don't try and find out. Yeah. This Anytime is, we are this anywhere weird. where they have cactus coolers, Hurt <laughs> drinks at least four. <laughs> back to back. Yeah. Cactus coolers are the rarest drinks in California. <laughs> They're the rarest drinks. The rarest drink. Yeah. Have you ever had a cactus cooler? No, I have not. Well, you, I don't know. You well, you only usually trouble. get them twice a year. So, if, you know, four is not so we're bad. Talking, we're talking rare wheels. We got long champs. We got Blitz 03s. <laughs> and then we got rare drinks. We got Ooh. the Cactus Cooler. Are you kidding me? We came here to talk about the Cactus Corolla, not the Cactus Cooler. Uh, you just named this thing? That's Did not you the, just name this thing? <laughs> Yo, <not>. Cactus Cooler <laughs> Liberty? Know. A86 is a special car just because it's basically like drifting. The A86 is basically drifting. It's all intertwined with the DNA of drifting and just Japanese car culture in general. Like it's a legend. If you ask most people who love drifting, they'll tell you Initial D and the A86 was a big part of why they fell in love with it. Or they'll tell you they watched um, hot version videos with Keiichi Suchia. Keiichi Suchia's uncanny ability to slide a car is legendary, but the Drift King's motorsport accolades are equally amazing. Dory Kin honed his Jedi wheel skills as a street racer in Japan, and in 1977 he earned his first professional start in the Fuji Freshman Series. Over the years Tsuchiya-san has raced everything from Corolla Sprinter Cup cars, F3 single-seaters, Group A GTRs, JGTC touring cars and, even NASCAR's and Le Mans prototypes, at Le Mans. KT took a 1995 GT2 class win in the works Honda NSX, and he nearly won the French Classic in 1999, behind the wheel of Toyota's factory GT1. It was during his early career where the Drift King would earn his name, getting sideways for fun during the heat of battle in traditional motorsport races. Dory Kin's now iconic Toyota Sprinter Truno GTV AE86 is the car that launched his career, and he spent many nights honing his skills on the mountain roads of Japan. This is why Tsuchiya-san was a consultant on the Japanese anime series Initial D. There are so many parallels between Kiyachi's younger years and Initial D's lead character Takumi Fujiwara, that many believe the anime to be loosely based on the life and times of the Drift King himself. Legend. Wait for it. Dari. It's arguably one of the most important vehicles in drifting. Well, if, if I had uh, working axles, I would show you. But right now, the, the car's just spinning the one tire. 
because that's how much power it makes. You can just floor like right now. I could, I could floor it, and I won't go anywhere. But it'll sound cool, and it'll feel cool. So that's that's why 100 horsepower cars are fun to drive on the street. Because like 500 horsepower is obviously sick, but you can't do anything without going fast. Like there's no, there's the only way you can go is fast. plan right now is just to paint it make it look nice um, I need to drive it around more uh, just to feel just to feel out what the car needs what it's calling for I don't like to just buy a car and dive right into it you know you, you got to drive it feel it out and, and figure out what you want to do to it but as of right now the 4AG feels awesome and I've been doing a lot of research I really like a 20 valve setup and I also like a 7AG 20 valve hybrid um, so if I were to do anything to the engine I'd probably go that route. But as far as chassis and stuff, this car has got pretty much everything. I, I'd probably swap out the coilovers for some BCs. It's already got adjustable control arms, four link, everything. It's a, it's a pretty well set up car. Ultimately paint and some kind of cool motor with individual throttle bodies because that is what an A86 should be. Oh, <laughs> I got a me? I, was, I got a fucking camera. Right I got a camera right here. Thanks, Chewing on Dipping. That's super scary. That's huge. You take a fucking tooth out. You can't be chucking monsters at people. You guys just wasted a rosemary bar. I hope you're happy. So, comment below. Tell us if you like this new style VHS. If you like this, what if we'll make more. Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, radio has a 1UZ Cressida. And I give him a run for his money into third gear. Disclaimer, that's like 43 miles an hour. So we're not breaking any laws depending on where we are.